Hello and welcome to this video where we will look at one of the most useful functions in Excel, the sum ifs function. And we are going to see multiple examples of its use. The sum ifs function will sum values based on one or multiple criteria. In cell F6, we are going to dive in with our first example and we want to sum the values in the amount column where the product is cheese. So if I type equals and sum ifs, you will see there are actually two functions with a similar name, sum if, which can only handle one criteria, and then sum ifs, which can handle one or more. It was released with Excel 2007, so a long time ago now, but prior to that, we only had some if. For me, some ifs replaces the previous one as it can do both jobs, and I think it's a little easier to use. So I'm going to choose some ifs here, and you can see we are prompted for a sum range first, then the range we're testing, the criteria range, and then the criteria itself. Now the sum range is going to be this amount column. And that data on the left is formatted as a table. And it's a table named sales. So I'm just going to click on the amount column header here. I'm not clicking on the D. I don't want column D of the sheet. I want the amount column of this table. So I get that table reference there. Now I could have clicked on D. You can use ranges with some ifs. It's just for me, I'm all about these tables. So sales amount, a comma brings me on to the criteria range. I'm checking for a product, so I'm going to select the product column. And then a comma brings me to the criteria. Now I want a product called cheese, so I'm going to type cheese in within these double quotes. There are three ways that you can enter criteria in some ifs. You can either enter it as text, which is what I've done, as a value, such as 21, or as a reference to a cell, an expression. And we're going to see that very soon because referring to a cell is probably the most common way of using this function. At the moment, I've hard-coded it in, I've written the text inside quotes. Close bracket enter tells me that 59,244 for the product cheese. Now, if I wanted to check that result, that's not a bad idea. Now, I don't want to check the result of every example in this video, or it's going to get repetitive and will make the video length longer. But just quickly for this one example, I can click inside my table, just pop up to data and switch on the filter. And if I filter this for cheese and then select my table column, I can see in the bottom right corner that indeed there are 59,244. So I know that function is working and I can have that confidence moving forward. Let me just remove that filter. I have no more interest in it for this video. What I do want to do now though, is select cheese from cell G3 here. So now I can reference a cell value instead of hard coding it in the formula. So if I double click on cell F6, and just nice and quick, I'm going to change cheese here to a reference to cell G3, which actually contains the same value. And pressing enter gives me the same answer, no surprise, but it confirms it working. And by referring to that cell, it's very easy from the data validation list here to change that to chicken or to change it to potato and get a different result in this report. So this function is named sum ifs and it can handle multiple conditions. At the moment, we have only done one, 
So we're using it like the old sum if. So in cell H3, I'm going to select a region and I'll choose the north. And now with this sum ifs function in F6, I'm going to edit this to include that extra criteria. So after G3 in this formula, if I put in a comma, you can see that we have the opportunity for a second criteria range and then criteria, and even the potential opening up there for a third criteria range and so on. We can handle a lot more than two or three here. Criteria range is the region column. Let me select that, comma, region is north, H3 there. We could have hard coded it in and I'll press enter. And as easy as that, we are now handling both conditions down to 8,960 for potato sales in the region of the north. See how wonderfully simple, but also powerful this function is. Now, both examples so far have been text values. Let's start to look at numbers. Let me delete that sum ifs, and I'll start fresh with a new one, sum ifs open bracket. And just quickly, let's imagine we want to sum the values, those amount values, but only if the amount is more than, let's say 1500. So this sum range would be the amount column, comma, the criteria range is also the amount column, comma, and then for the criteria. Now the difference here compared to the previous examples is that we want to know if it's greater than a value. When we're testing for the north, it is just the north. There is no greater than, less than. So we can't just type 1500. Or we can, I could close bracket and press enter, but that is looking for the amounts which are exactly 1500, exactly. And we could use a value in that way. You may have a reason to do that. Right now, that doesn't make any sense. So coming back into that formula and coming up to the bar here, we are going to wrap it as text. And the reason for that is because I'm going to bring in the greater than and the equal sign. I'm going, in, going to bring in these logical operators, but they are text characters, so I can't write it as it is at the moment. I need to enclose that in the double quotes because we can only write in these criterion as a cell reference, text, or a value. And I've opted for text there, but press enter. That is the total for all of the amounts that are 1500 or more. So just like the very first example, that example right now is hard coded in. I've typed in 1500, that's not wrong, that may even be better because it's not on the grid and it's less likely to be accidentally damaged. However, just like the previous examples, we may want that in the cell so that users can interact with it and engage with the report. So what we're going to do for this final example is use that from cell for F3 to use a number value, but going to work with these dates. So let's bring all of this together and say that we want to sum the values for all of the orders after the 1st of April, 2020. So since that date for potatoes in the North. So I'll begin in cell F3 by typing in the 1st of April 2020, because that is the date we want it from. And I'll delete this and start a new sum ifs to start afresh. The sum range is the amount column, comma, the criteria range. It doesn't matter what order we do it in, but it makes sense to write it left to right. So let's begin with a date. So date column, comma. Okay, now we need to combine the value in cell F3 to the logical operators greater than or equal to. So I'm going to wrap the greater than or equal to in those double quotes, just like we've done, but then combine it with the reference to a cell, create this expression. 
And to do that, I'll use the ampersand character to concatenate onto that, to join onto that the value from cell F3. So greater than or equals, join to F3, that creates that expression, that criteria. The rest of it, we're home and dry. It's a repeat from before. So comma, the criteria is going to be product, comma, cell G3, comma, region column, comma, H3. And you can see it's asking, do you want a fourth criteria range? Well, no, I've actually run out of columns. <laughs> that is all the ones we want to give. But it shows once again how easy it is to create this complex criteria in here. Three conditions using cell values, both date and text. Close bracket and run it, 6,970. I won't worry about checking that. I'll assume it's all good. And that is the power, but also the ease of using the quite wonderful sum ifs function. This file that I've used in this video you can download it in the description of this video. So please feel free to do that, to practice along. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to be informed about the latest videos from this channel. Bye for now.